the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Ash, with Alan Reed as the squalid. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half hour's transcribed entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, today is going to be one of the biggest days of my life. I'm going to march you to my first big parade since I'm in America. I'm going to remember when I'm first to come here. Do you know how I'm a like a parade, Mamma Mia? Well, I'm a silly little one, about the five or six of people. So I'm a get the behind the men with the big bass the drum, had to go boom a boom, and I'm a march. Oh, it's a wonderful! Everybody's a calling me brother. People is a throw money at me, and when it's all over, I'm a find out I'm a member of the Salvation Army. <laughs> And then a few months later, I'm seeing another parade. About the ten men. They're not going to fire. They're just marching up in the back in the front of a store. So I'm marching too. Here they also call me brother, but nobody's throwing me pennies, and I'm going to find out I'm a, what do they call a picket. <laughs> then a few weeks later, I'm seeing the street, another parade. This is a much longer. So again, I'm a getting a back in a march. Nobody is a calling me brother. Nobody is a throwing me the pennies. Nobody is even a talking to me. Then all of the people, they take out the handkerchief. So I'm going to take out my handkerchief. And then they started to cry. So I'm going to cry too. Soon I'm going to cry louder than anybody else. Everybody is a turn to me and say, Must be poor Charlie's a brother. But anyway, today is going to be a real big parade for 4th of July. And I'm going to make no mistake when I'm marching there. Because in my whole night school class, they're going to march with me. And the last night when I went to my night school, my teacher, Miss Spalding, was told us all about the parade. Oh, I'm going to remember how good I'm felt on my way to the class. America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From ocean to ocean. That's all I chose, no matter. Everything is going to be Quiet class, please. Yeah. All right. Let's come to attention. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Harwood? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? Here, present in attendance and at your service. <laughs> Mr. Schultz? Oh, I'm so sorry. For a minute, I thought I was a gas station attendant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, fellow boobles. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, can I please have some choir? Sorry, all we got is mobile gas. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, what am I going to do with you? Ooh, have I got a suggestion? <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please. It's no use begging, Miss Balding. I'm already married. <laughs> I didn't mean I... I well, uh, uh, let's get on with our history lesson. Uh -huh, so you think I'm cute, huh? <laughs> Come on, admit it, Miss Balding, huh? <laughs> I do not, and... Uh -huh, I got you flustered. <laughs> you have not. We will now discuss our history lesson. Now, everyone knows that Washington crossed the Schultz in a boat. I mean, Washington crossed the Potomac in a Schultz. Uh, Be careful, you're scraping my barnet. <laughs> we will now get on with our history lesson. Now, class, if any of you knows the answer, raise your hand. Now, who can tell me five causes of the Revolutionary War? Oh, I know, Miss Balding. Don't ask any further. I got the whole answer. 
Oh, what a show off. <laughs> Will somebody call up Washington and have him throw Olsen across the Potomac? <laughs> Mr. Olsen, I know you know all the answers, but I want to see if anyone else knows. Come now, class. Five causes of the Revolutionary War. Anybody? <laughs> well, how about four causes? All right, three. <laughs> Two? Two? Miss Spalding, the war is over. What do you want to do, start up again? <laughs> oh, please. Mr. Vasco, do you know the answer? No. Mr. Horowitz. I'm sorry, I don't carry a grudge. <laughs> please, Miss Spalding, no one knows. That's my turn to give the answer. There he goes. One good apple spoils the whole rotten barrel. <laughs> please ignore him, Mr. Olson. Go on. Yo. Uh, five causes of the Revolutionary War. One, heavy taxes on the colonies. Two, not enough representation in government. Three, foreign soldiers on American soil. Four, unfair legislation. And five, British capture of American ships. Himmel, no wonder I hate English mustard. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good, Mr. Olson. No. Mr. Basco, why is it you couldn't answer any of the questions? Well, uh, when I'm spoiling it to tell the truth, how was it thinking of the bigger parade of tomorrow and how happy am I going to be too much? Oh, yes, I'm glad you reminded me. Class, I want you to remember this carefully. Now, we're all meeting at 12 o'clock on the morning of Michigan and 16th, right by the armory, where we'll join the parade. Oh, I'm going to highly wait. This is going to be a wonderful parade. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I know a place on the way. A fella sells the most delicious hot dogs in the world. We're going to stop and buy from him, huh? What <laughs> for? We have to buy hot dogs. My wife, Esther, she'll bake a wonderful strudel. Be enough for all of us. <laughs> I think hot dogs. Oh, that was a good idea, Horowitz. Yeah, I will bring some smorgasbord and some Swedish wine for the strudel. What's the matter with hot dogs? <laughs> yeah, wait a minute, but, but don't forget to me. I'm going to Pasquale Spaghetti Palace and order some pizza. No, kill me. I like hot dogs. <laughs> Flash, that sounds wonderful. Mr. Schultz, why do you insist on hot dogs? Because I was the fellow who was going to be selling them. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi, hello, hello. Hey, Pasquale, I want you should do me a favor. You gotta make me a lot of pizziola. I'm gonna feed a big crowd. Luigi, my son, hoo-hoo, I could kiss you. <laughs> well, Pasquale, what the fuck? All I'm gonna say is I want you should make me pizziola for a big crowd. That's right, you taking my daughter Rose out of picnic. <laughs> No, Pasquale, is for a parade, and I'm going to do with my night school class. How much money you want for five big orders of a pizza? Money, money, money. Luigi, you think everything in life is money? There's some things in life that money can't buy. Like a what, Pasquale? Like love, marriage, good wife. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm not marrying your daughter, Rosa. Please, Luigi, you marry her now. And I promise you, I never ask you again. <laughs> no, Pasquale, she's a too fat for me. Luigi, be a good businessman. When you marry a woman, you must look for value. Value? Sure. When you buy toothpaste, what do you buy? The smaller size? The medium size? It's no use, Pasquale. I'm not going to buy the giant economy size. <laughs> Luigi, you're talking stupid. Remember, good things, they always come in bigger packages. You mean a little packages? Shut up. Today I'm pushing a bigger package. <laughs> Luigi, you ain't using your head. Don't you know bachelor life is very good, but it ain't for single fellas. You marry my Rosa, go on a nice honeymoon. All expenses are paid. You bring her back into your new house, carry her across the threshold. <laughs> carry Rosa across the threshold? <laughs> With the what? <laughs> With your arms, that's what. Pasquale, you know I'm going to never carry Rosa across the threshold. All right, then I buy you a bulldozer and you push her across. <laughs> No, Pasquale, please. Rose is a nice girl, but not for me. 
Just to tell me, are you going to make me food for this parade tomorrow? No. I'm not going to have nothing to do with... <laughs> Sit down, my little pumpkin head. <laughs> oh, thank you, Pasquale. Luigi, this parade means a lot to you, eh? Oh, yes, Pasquale. I'm going to be so proud of walking in my first big parade. I'm going to feel like a real American. Luigi, I got a way is a guarantee to make you the biggest and the best American in that parade tomorrow. Well, that's wonderful. How, Pasquale? When the parade is a pass to the review in the stand at 9th and Michigan, you got to explode the biggest of firecrackers that they ever saw. Yeah, but Pasquale... I think I'm aware of that shooting off of the firecrackers, that's against the law. Oh, yes, you're right. But that was before they invented the 4th of July. Aye. <laughs> After the 4th of July, they made illegal the fireworks by passing a 4th Amendment. And this amendment is also called the Taft-Hartley Act. <laughs> which is a mean that anybody can shoot off of firecrackers unless their name is a Taft or Hartley. <laughs> What's your name? Hello, Luigi Basco. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> you lucky pup for you. Pascale, <laughs> <laughs> how you know so much about the law? Well, I'm always like to keep a misinformed. <laughs> <laughs> Every chance I get, I read the Washington paper, the congressional racket, you see. <laughs> now... Luigi, you leave everything to your good friend Pasquale. I'm going to buy you the biggest firecrackers in the town. Oh, Pasquale, you're so wonderful to me. Hey, you think when I'm exploding the firecrackers, they're going to take my name or put my picture in a paper so I'm going to send it to Italy? Luigi, you don't have to send your picture to Italy. They're going to send you there. <laughs> Me? What? Uh, on a goodwill tour. Uh, Luigi, tomorrow is really going to be a big day for you. Believe me, when you explode those firecrackers, people are going to be so touched that they're going to be carried away with emotion. <laughs> Oh, Pascal, I'm going to get to you to thank you for that. That's all right, Luigi. And if my thinking is right, you're going to be carried away, too. <laughs> now go, 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 go. I'm going to take care of everything. All right, Pascal. And I thank you for everything. Goodbye. Goodbye, little banana nose. <laughs> and remember, don't tell anybody how you're going to shoot off a of fireworks, because then they do it, too, and it won't be no surprise. All right, Pascal. I'm not telling nobody. <laughs> So here's your 4th of July parade is more important than my roast, eh? Well, I fix a him a good. <laughs> I'm not a mean man, but when somebody is purposely go out of his way not to marry my daughter, I'm the biggest rat in Chicago. <laughs> Hello? Police department? This is Pasquale, the rat. I, I mean, a <laughs> uh, fellow who's a good friend of yours. I got a tip for you. And my name... Sorry, but I gotta keep my identity under my head. Uh, anyway, if you stand on a Michigan at night at tomorrow at 12 o'clock when the parade is passing by, you're gonna see a fellow who's suddenly go crazy and shoot off a firecrackers and no telling what else he's gonna do. Huh? What kind of fellow he is? Well, uh, I'm not to say he's uh, uh, supervisive, uh, but all I can tell you, uh, he's eat only a pink of salmon, He's always a sneezing in a red handkerchiefs, uh, and his favorite drink is a Moscow mule. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, here's a little thought that's good to keep in mind. It's the fact that Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is really a two-way treat. It's a taste treat with lots of delicious, long-lasting flavor, and it's a chewing treat, something good that you can chew on for as long as you want. What's more, this pleasant chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and clean, so it's especially helpful right after a meal. Enjoy healthful, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum often, and be sure that the folks at your house always have some handy. Keep a few packages on the living room table. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, in a few minutes, the Schultz is going to meet me here, and we're going to get it to my first 4th of July parade. Over there, Pasquale is going to hand me the firecrackers, and I'm going to shoot them off. 
Mamma mia. Maybe my pictures are going to be in a newsreel. Can you imagine one day you're going to walk into the movies in Italy and there's going to be double a feature. Luigi Basco and my friends are um, as I go west. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a big day. Luigi, my fellow boobie. Uh, hello, Schultz. What's the matter, Luigi? You're talking so shaky. Well, Schultz, I'm, I'm a little nervous. You know, it's my first parade. Well, maybe you ought to have a little schnifter or two. Hmm? <laughs> you think a schnifter is going to make me look better? <laughs> Who would it? You should see my herrings, how beautiful they look when they are pickled. <laughs> They lose all their nervousness. Last week, I pickled two of them, and today they were standing up in the barrel, daring me to come down and get them. <laughs> oh, smile, Luigi. I'm only trying to cheer you up. Oh, well, th thank you, Schultz. I'm a feel better already. Hey, Schultz, look at all of this food that Pasquale is giving me free for the parade. No, stop. When Pasquale gives anything away, it's got strings attached. Rosa's apron strings. <laughs> oh, no, Schultz, there's no strings attached. Pasquale is a very good hearted man. While I'm walking with a parade, he's a promise to take my picture with that new, uh, that, uh, you know, the Pol Polaroid camera. What? That's the camera where you press the button and the picture comes out in one minute. Isn't that the fast? What so fast? Last week I went to a picture, it was so terrible, I came out in 10 seconds. <laughs> Now, now, what other favors is Pasquale going to do for you today? Hmm? Well, uh, well, Schultz, uh, <laughs> it's a secret. But you're going to find out later. All right. Well, come on. we got to go to the parade now. Hmm? All right, Schultz, come. <laughs> Mamma mia, I'm, I'm feeling nervous again. Oh, please, Luigi, stop with that nervous business. Smile, Luigi. Be like me, calm. Huh? Always happy, laughing. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> My rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> Together. We're going to join the parade in a moment, and we don't want anyone getting lost. Oh, this is such fun. Look, I brought the Wiener Schnitzel. Oh, and I brought some smorgasbord. Wait, right, you taste my strudel. I'm a cut of the pizza. Uh -huh. Himmel, it sounds like the United Nations with heartburn. <laughs> well, don't worry. I brought something American, the bicarbonate of soda. <laughs> Schultz, Miss Spalding, she's a funnier than you. Uh, yeah, Miss Spalding, maybe you and me, we go on television together, huh? We have it a program called Breakfast in Night School. <laughs> hey, look, uh, look, uh, here comes uh, all of the people that started a parade. Oh, look, here comes all the factory contingents. Boykers of the Dr. Scholl Footpad Company. They must be breaking in a new shipment of arch supports. <laughs> oh, look how heavy they stamp up and down. Hey, look, here's another one. Yeah. Workers of the Swanson a Chicken a Fricassee Company. Yeah, yeah, and look at that drum major. Instead of carrying a baton, he is waving a chicken. <laughs> All right, class, the parade captain is motioning us. Mr. Basco, Mr. Basco. Yes, sir. You carry the flag. Me? Me carry the flag? Mamma mia. Hey, hold on, would you please uh, hold us a flag for me? I'm coming right the back. Uh, Mr. Basco, where are you going? Uh, it's a surprise. I'm coming right the back. Oh, don't be too long, Luigi. All right. Uh. Hey, Pasquale, what is it, the stuff you brought? Hey, Luigi, is it a firecracker? Is it a match? Is it a you light them? All right. Uh. Hey, Pasquale, where are you going? I'm going to call a cop to make sure he don't miss you. <laughs> Thank you, Pasquale. Hey, look, everybody, look there. Well, now I'm going to light the this one. Hey, now, look at this one. Hey, what's the matter? Why are you all running away? Hey, who's lighting all these firecrackers? That's me, officer. I'm the one. Oh, yeah? 
Let me have that. All right, to hear that. <laughs> Mamma mia, what's uh, happening to the policeman? <laughs> Luigi, I tell you, you got nothing to worry about. I'm gonna get you the best lawyer there is and I'll have you out of jail in 15 or 20 years. Yeah, but Pasquale, you told me it was not against the law to shoot off of the firecrackers. Well, I made a mistake. But believe me, the whole thing was purely intentional. Besides, who told you to hand the cop with a firecracker in his hand? You know, when he's climbed down from that lamppost, he was ready to kill you. Mamma mia, that's the worst day of my life. I would do anything to get out of this. Anything, Luigi? Well, uh, almost anything. Listen, Luigi, visiting time is almost up. In two minutes, you're going to be up in front of the judge. If you marry my Rose, I get the best lawyer in the town. We put up your bail. He's a habeas of your corpus. <laughs> Then we drag your case through the court for five or six years. By that time, you get your citizen papers and cases are dismissed. What do you say, my son? All right, the papa. <laughs> Good, I call in the bashful bride. Rosa! 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 Come here, my little shrinking violet. Say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. Rosa, guess what? Luigi is about to offer you his hand. What do you say to that? Papa, what am I going to do with three hands? Oh, shut up your face. <laughs> All right, time's up. Vasco, follow me. Don't worry, Luigi. I've got to take care of everything. Hear ye, hear ye. Court is now in session. Judge Mitchell presiding. Your Honor, all these men here are charged with violation of the fireworks ordinance. Please, Your Honor. I'm going to try to be good American. I'm going to know it's against the law. Yeah, pay no attention to that fellow, Judge. He's get the good lawyer to defend him. Quiet. I'll have no comments in the courtroom. No, stop, stop. I heard all about it, and I came as quick as I could. It's not Luigi's fault. It's that Pasquale. He got Luigi all for shimmels. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> Quiet. If I hear another outburst, I'll clear this court. Now, you men. Every year at this time, I get a group of men who continue violating a very important safety ordinance. Almost every city in the United States as a 4th of July spectacle where you may witness a fireworks display in a safe and sane way. Why you persist in endangering your life and the lives of your children and your property, I cannot understand. But, uh, Judge, I'm always uh, trying to be good American. You're all good Americans. Wait, I'll give you a chance to prove it. Let's hear you all sing the Star Spangled Banner. All right, come on. Oh, I say, can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hail in the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the lamb parts we watched. Was so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, bombs was bursting in the air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that a star spangle banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? You, what's your name? L L L Luigi Basco. 
Uh, don't be frightened. The case against you is dismissed. You're the only person I've ever heard sing the Star Spangled Banner through from beginning to end. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Basco, if you've taken the time to memorize our national anthem, you must be a good citizen. I'm, a, I'm not a second stanza, too. That makes him two good citizens. <laughs> But a judge, you can't let him go. I'm gonna hire him a lawyer. Uh, who are you? He's, he's Pasquale. He's a fellow that gave Luigi the fireworks. Yes, so that's not true. Well, I've got nothing against you for that. In fact, uh, I'd like to get some fireworks myself. <laughs> you would? Why, certainly. But uh, I don't know where to get them. Uh, you'd be a friend of mine if you'd tell me. <laughs> Well, in that case, the judge, I'm happy to be of service to you. Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace at 23 North Halstead Street. That's all I want to know. I thought you were the guilty party. Two days in jail. Hey, wait, the judge, wait. <laughs> Luigi, where are you going, my son? How am I going to get to you a lawyer? Happy to see you copper, Sir Papa. <laughs> So, Mamma Mia, after I'm a get out of court, I'm a join a parade, and I'm a having the most wonderful time of my life. At the end of a parade, there was a big sign which shows a picture of a Declaration of Independence, which was signed by great Americans. We hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal. Mamma Mia, isn't it a funny thing? These great men realized this almost 200 years ago. And some people still don't understand it. Well, a good night, Mamma Mia. I'd like to wish you a happy July 4th, but by the time you're going to get this letter, it's going to be two weeks later. So I'm wishing you happy July the 18th. <laughs> you loving the son, Luigi Basco, the little immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they'd like to remind you that refreshing Wrigley Spearmint is an ideal treat for your whole family to enjoy. You can give it to youngsters between meals without worrying about spoiling their appetites. And you can enjoy it every day yourself because it's never rich or heavy. So for a delicious taste treat and a healthful chewing treat all combined into one, get some Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. It costs very little, and it tastes mighty good. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Gum invite you to listen next week at the same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi was transcribed and is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Derman. Jay Carroll Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Friends, the Wrigley Company invites you to listen to their other program, The Gene Offrey Show, every Saturday night over most of these same CBS stations. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>